forget commander in chief. How about fundraiser? If the rise of the president's permanent campaign by Brendan Doherty showing President Obama has held more re-election fundraisers than the last five presidents combined. And guess what? All on the taxpayer dime. Gretchen Hamill is the director of public notice. So, Gretchen, let's look at these numbers because it really is astonishing to it see is. how many he's held compared to other presidents because it's not just bigger by a little bit. No. It's bigger by a lot. Can we see those numbers? There we go. So, you see, like, Cardi, Jimmy Carter held four. Four. Can you even believe that? I mean, talk about an above-all strategy. This is an above-all strategy to get reelected, and it shows that this president has really put getting reelected ahead of some basic responsibilities as being president. And, of course, you know, it's paying off because he's getting lots of dough. Let's take a look at those numbers. Those are pretty shocking as well. And it shows just uh, how far behind the Republicans might be. Yeah, and to comment on this, it was earlier this year that his advisors were saying that they could potentially hit the billion-dollar mark. He's at 191. There's a long ways to go to get a billion. Yeah, this is a little disappointing for them, despite their best efforts. They're not getting the numbers they expected. Obama at 196 million, Romney at 88. Of course, this doesn't count the PACs, and the no. PACs are critically important here. It doesn't count the PACs, and it also doesn't count what the unions are going to be spending this year, and that's a key component. What the unions spend, what super PACs spend, I mean, those numbers could be a lot larger than what we see spent in the total campaigns. Now, you know what's interesting about this is some time ago, back in 07, Obama was saying how we need open government yep. and the election campaigns, all of this should be out, out front. Here's what he, what he said back in 2007. From my first day as president, I will launch the most sweeping ethics reform in American history. We will make government more open, more accountable, and more responsive to the problems of the American people. You buy that? Did that happen? Um, well, I think this is just another example of him saying one thing and doing another. He, you know, has bemoaned Wall Street. He has taken money from Wall Street. He has talked about the PACs and how damaging they are. Then he sent his administration officials to support those super PACs speaking at their events. Well, uh, today he was talking to the, about to the unions mm -hmm. and basically trying to shore up their support because some of the things he's done lately yeah. they haven't been too thrilled about, like not uh, approving the Keystone Pipeline. They saw a lot of jobs there that just went away when the president nixed that idea. So he's trying to appeal to them today. Here's what he said. Republicans in Congress would rather put fewer of you to work rebuilding America than ask millionaires and billionaires to live without massive new tax cuts on top of the ones they've already got. So here we go, class warfare. What do you make of it? Well, the president will be kicking off his campaign this weekend, and the unions are critical. They always say in campaign school, you start out talking to your base, you talk to the middle, and then you come back to your base. He's starting out with his base. He's starting out to make sure that the unions are there for him, that they're going to turn out. And not only did they not approve Keystone, which was something that the unions wanted, but he also approved the Columbia Free Trade Agreement and other free trade agreements that the unions have been fighting against for years. Yeah, you know, today we talked a lot about his new campaign called Forward. He's got a video yeah. out. We took a look at that. You know, and there's a lot of debate about the numbers he's using, whether they're accurate or not, and whether they really tell the whole story about yeah. what's gone on in this economy. What do you, how do you analyze, is this really appealing? Do you think people are going to stand up and say, Forward, yeah, we love that campaign slogan. Yeah, I, I don't know, because it... It allows people to say, well, no, we're not going forward. We're going backwards. Or we've just been in neutral. And some people feel like they've been in park for the past few years. So if you're in park, if you don't see your check, you know, your check increasing, your savings increasing, then you don't feel like you're moving forward. So, well, you know, to be true here, 401ks are on fire right now because the yeah. stock market is defying all expectations, yeah. even though the economy is going nowhere. We have a 2.2% growth rate. Uh, you know, unemployment's still above 8%. We can't seem to get any traction there. And yet the stock market on fire, yeah. you know, if I were the president, I might try to put up a it, little exactly. bit and say that's due to my policy. Yeah, I, I, that's definitely something he should be talking about and talking more about and less about jobs. Don't, don't put all of this on jobs. And Republicans need to take that same token of advice when it comes to communicating. Don't let this write on jobs alone, but let it, let it write on the total economy because you never know what jobs are going to do, if they're going to go up or if they're going to go down. So you don't want that to be the one marker that well, they're judging people by. It's been mostly punk for the last few <laughs> it, years it has and, been a, and not good news. But, Gretch, thanks for coming on. It's thank always you. great to have you on the show. We really appreciate thanks. it. Thanks for having us. Okay, a top official at the